And if you're wondering, I do the intro because it's for convenience. For those watching YouTube, I just didn't put up a break screen because we just got into round five. So, yeah. This is Goobers versus Team Firepluck, the probably last match of this on Comic Catcher Redux. This tournament's been a lot shorter than I thought it would be. Although I also thought it was going to be Swiss into single elimination, but nope. So, considering the standings, the way this is going to work out is probably going to be... Okay, so, at this point, we have Goobers having won... Well, gotten a bye and won three matches. Firepluck on 3-1. So, this is going... If Goobers win, then they are... They're the winners. And Firepluck will at 3-2. And then it's question of Spark Commando and Astrin, I think. I'm guessing they're fighting each other. Looking at the bracket, yes. So, so I guess depending on who wins. So the loser of this would probably, if they want to have a proper second place, they'd have to fight a tiebreaker match with the winner of Spark Commando and Astron. I'm not sure if that's planned. Now, if Goobers lose, then I think the same thing happens. Because Firepluck would get a solid 4-1. And then, no, actually, you could have a tiebreaker for top place. If Firepluck wins, then it's 4-1 for Firepluck. And 4-1 and for one of Spark Commando or Astron, so we're going to have to have a tiebreaker. So if Goobers win, they get first. If, Fire if Team Firepluck wins, then they have to fight again in a tiebreaker match for first. Assuming we're doing tiebreaker matches, which we usually do. Anyway, so, back to the game proper, though. Drone going for Rovers. Malric going for Rovers. And Jazz Cash breaking the trend and going for Tanks. So that was out of the map, though. We have Rovers again for FFC. Tanks, again, for Firepluck. And Air for Izzeride, completely breaking the trend of ground vehicle factories. Izzeride going for planes. Possibly a risky move because it does mean that you aren't having as much of a ground presence, but it's just a good idea. I mean, really, just have some air. You have a bit more flexibility. You're, you're forced your opponents to build some anti-air, or at least some flex AA, which that's generally fencers, and fencers can be dealt with by a lot of scorchers. So, good... Good ideas all around. I'm not really sure what's going to happen with the second rover factory with Malric. It looks like they're primarily using it to produce the anti-air, while the anti-ground is being produced primarily by drone. That'll probably work out in practice. I mean, it, it's... That is the thing with having two ground factories, is that one of them can be just dedicated to anti-air if you need to. Or two ground factories of the same type, I should say. One of them can be ground... Can be there. <laughs> Assert dominance. Bite them in the hand. Make sure they know who's boss. Or drop fire on them. That works too. Most people will surrender to another person when they're on fire. Just one of those human reflex things. Like, you're burning and someone says to, you know, someone asks that you acknowledge their dominance. I mean, you're probably just going to be screaming in pain. But in the few moments of lucidity that you have between screams and pain, you'll probably just concede that, yeah, okay, they've dominated you right now. So fire is good for that too. Oh, new, oh, ban drone established dominance. Okay, I see. New, okay, that makes sense. That's what that's what new was getting at. But anyway, we have still got a fairly even start from this match. Like three minutes in, not a whole lot of harassment managing to actually find its way to any success. But a reasonably even economic development, although with the ogre up here, and a lot of crashes being built up, a lot more crashes than I expected. This this error at the beginning has actually done a lot of value. Like it's it's really pushed a lot. Because at this point, I was expecting only Malver could go for some anti-air, but no, there's enough threat in the anti-air between the Phoenixes and Ravager and Ravens that the air the air is being respected. But that means this ogre is gonna have a field day. So, I don't really see how this is going to work out in the early game for Team Goobers. I mean, it might. It might be okay, but it's going to be a bit of an uphill struggle. And at the same time, of course, a lot of expansion going out here for Team Firepluck. And it should also be pointed out that, of course, the Ravens can come in and start actually wrecking things. Now, granted, this Crasher is helping the Mason stay alive, but, I mean, the, there's not a whole lot of other defenses. There's really no anti-air being built up other than the mobile anti-air. And there's not a lot of that either. Like, if we look at the Crashers, there's, like, four of them in the game. And really not that present. So, yeah. The Ravens have a feel. The Ravens just go anywhere and destroy anything. Fireblock Weber might be losing their commander very shortly. Oof. No. Maybe. Yes. Actually. No. Oh, my goodness. 
Fireblock saving their commander at this stage in the game, that actually is still relevant because that commander is being used for forward expansion. So, yeah, if that commander was lost, that would have been a big deal. But that commander was indeed saved. At least for now. The ogre is here to help defend. Get rid of the scorcher. Oh, that commander, again, just barely survives. Malric desperately trying and failing to get rid of the commander. Oh, man, that was close. And at the same time, it looks like, well, revenge has been had. Drone losing their commander as well. So right off the bat, though, there is... Or not off the bat. Five minutes in, though, we still have the goobers with an economic advantage. The lack of commanders is a problem because it makes it a little bit harder to actually push forward expansions and make those expansions secure as you go. But, I mean, as long as I stop throwing Scorchers into this meat grinder, then I could see the north side having a bit of a chance. I mean, they their advantage. Economically, an advantage. Attrition-wise, at a disadvantage. But, you know, they could turn the attrition thing around. Just, you know, be a little more careful with the micro. But, yeah, it's a question of what's going to happen, though, with the air. Because, again... There's air units, and the anti-air is being slowly but surely chipped away, and also is kind of being discouraged by the amount of ground units that are destroying the anti-air for free. So, I don't expect that we're going to see a whole lot of anti-air, which means that sooner or later we're probably going to see another air assault from Team Fireplug, and that's probably going to be a massive blow again. You know, a good phoenix or two getting rid of these, these scorchers, or send a bunch of ravens around the map to get rid of all the metal extractors that have been built up. There are a lot of options that are going to completely stuff basically anything that gets attempted by by team by the goobers and yet another commander goes down too that's another expansion that that's much harder to build up and make secure at the same time so yeah slowly but surely team fireplug is asserting dominance they are taking the map they are getting all the map control and defending it reasonably well too and keeping their commanders alive so they don't even have to build as many defensive structures even though they are this is clearly forcing the drone, team drone to go push, raiding more, pushing more, trying to find anything they can to break up some of this advantage, break up some of the map control that Team Fireplug has. Because right now, Team Fireplug, they're sitting pretty pretty. Like, they, the only problem right now is that these blisses are going to be a problem. But they may not be a, that big of a problem if the Scorchers can deal with them. But again, it's a, a bit of a big if. Scorchers aren't really designed to deal with them that effectively. But... Hey, between the Scorchers and the Lotus, it is still going to be enough. I mean, the Scorchers are able to deal with them effectively in large enough numbers when they aren't all getting stunned at once and can push into the Blitzes. So, yeah, the Blitzes, they go down. The Scorchers go down. I am actually might have been mistaken. I think Scorchers... Maybe Scorchers were actually designed to deal with Blitzes now that I think about it. Either way, though, the Blitzes are going to be having a bit of a tough time. And by that, I mean they're dead. But, I mean, any future Blitzes would also have a tough time. Of which there are none. Looks like there's a bit of a switch over to Etten's. No, more Blitzes are on the way. So yeah, those Blitzes are going to also be having a tough time. I really don't understand what the motivation here is. But hey, I mean, give it a shot. See what happens. They'll die horribly. That's what'll happen. But you can try. At this point, south side, they have 13,000 attrition compared to 5,000. Like, three-fold attrition advantage. Now a 30 metal per second, like 30-ish percent metal advantage. I mean, this is... I'm not sure if I can really say slowly but surely working out for Team Fireplug. It's pretty quickly working out for Team Fireplug. It, not much is actually dealing with them right now. Like, they're just able to push in and start wiping out everything. Like, what map control is there is gone. And again, the commanders aren't there, so there's not a lot of easy defenses to deal with all these units coming in. The scores coming in. We'll get rid of the Blitz. They'll get rid of everything. This entire base is done. Drone throwing in the towels. We are going to have a, a top place tiebreaker. Yeah. Whoever wins between Spark Manu and Astrin, like Spark for Manu and Astrin, is going to be fighting against Team Firepluck for the victory, for the first place. And that. Yeah, drone's gone. Malric's the only one left. Malric might hold off valiantly for a while, but I think this is going to be it. Malric throws in the towel, and that is game. So, Team Drone taking their first loss to Team Firepluck on Comic Catcher Redux. Fairly even game, but overall, just that air. That air really... That pushed for a bizarre switch. I think that fewer crashes would have been fine. I think, it, like, half as many crashes would have done the job. But yeah, the ogre is being used to counter the crashes directly. Nothing really countering the ogres directly. Ravagers came up way too late. And the fact that the air was still this really threatening force that couldn't easily be dealt with. Yeah, ultimately, that just did them in.
I think I would like to see Fencers, though. It's not the best against Ravens, but it would have worked reasonably well against the Ogres. Like, them... Well, more so Ravagers, but at least to have, like, Fencer Ravager to deal with the Ogres and the Air. Because the Ravagers are quite tough. They can tank quite a lot for the Phoenixes and the Ravens. And the Fencers can, of course, damage the Phoenixes and Ravens. And maybe two or three crashes on top of that actually kill them. That, I think, could have done the trick while not being vulnerable on the ground. But we didn't see that. We saw a lot of crashes be built, and that was exactly what Team Fireplug took advantage of. And good for them. They did a nice job there, so they take the win. They're now 4-1 in a game that looks like it is going to be leading into a tiebreaker. And Spark Commando actually did beat Astron. If you look at this, the standings right now, Spark Commando beat Astron. CSM lost to GBC. Or, I don't know if they lost to GBC. Sorry. I don't know if they lost to GBC. I'm assuming they have, but I haven't actually finished the match yet. Really? Has that match started? Oh, yeah. GBC did beat CSM. I was right. Yeah. That, that's what I thought. So yeah, GBC beat CSM, but if you look at the standings, that puts them up to, like, 2 and 3 versus 1 and 4. And, yeah, I guess Dice Man's do this gets a bye at the very end. So yeah, Spark Commando and Firepluck are currently up against each other for first place. Cooper's getting second, third place because they did get that win at the beginning. It's not really a buy. It was actually a valid win. So in theory, you could have a three-way, but like a three-way tiebreaker. But Fireplug did just beat Goobers, so probably not. And then whoever wins this gets five-one. Assuming we are having a tiebreaker. But yeah, Goobers got a buy. Oh, that's right. Goobers got a buy. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, it's kind of weird to remember because the bracket was changed halfway through, so the video has evidence of that, but I don't actually have anything else. Alright, double check what's going on here. We have... I'm not sure this is going to work, because like I said, I, I kind of see that the tie kind of got resolved anyway, but... Yeah, because Astro Spark for Manu, it'll be a bit different. I would say, like, Spark for Manu... Oh, sorry. No, Astro Spark for Manu. Which one? Fireplug Spark and Astro. Fireplug and Astro. Or Fireplug and Spark for Manu. That. That's what it is. Fireplug versus Spark for Manu. That's what matters. Anyway, I'm going to just go to a bit of a break while we're waiting for that. And then we'll be back afterwards with the tiebreaker. 